Welcome back to the Core Cars News Tech Lab. Today we're taking a look at AT&T TV. This is a new live TV streaming service coming from AT&T later this year. It will be nationwide by the end of 2019 and is something completely new. Now AT&T TV and AT&T TV Now are two different services. AT&T TV is something that will be launching maybe as soon as next month according to reports and will be nationwide by the end of 2019. AT&T TV now is just a rebranded version of DirecTV. We'll break that out a little bit more a little later in the video, but I wanted to be clear about that right off the bat. We are getting a lot of emails with questions about AT&T TV, so we're going to try to break down what we know, what we don't know, and try to answer the questions we are getting from our readers. First though, before I get into that, if you're new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up helps us a lot. Hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV with daily core cutting um, related videos, answering your questions with a weekly core cutting Q&A every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, core cutting news updates, and more. So hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, helps us by letting YouTube know you, know, you like what we do, and hopefully we can help you break free from TV. It's high cost and still watch what you want. All right, let's take a look at this. What is at and TV? In short, AT&T TV is the streaming version of DirecTV. According to AT&T, it will roll out in the third quarter of 2019. Our sources are telling us as soon as August, but no later than September. will be nationwide by the end of 2019. According to the training documents posted online by AT&T employees, AT&T TV will also be replacing UVerse TV. Uverse TV will no longer be sold in markets offering AT&T TV once it goes live. Now remember, this is for new customers. If you're an existing AT&T Uverse TV customer, you will get to continue to use your service. Just no new customers are going to be added. And that's been supported by documents going back um, a couple years now. There's been reports and rumors that AT&T wanted to phase out Uverse TV. And again, it is important to remember that AT&T TV and AT&T TV Now are two different services. AT&T TV Now is DirecTV Now rebranded. Nothing's changed, same channels, same package, new logos basically is a big difference here. Oh, AT&T announced this week that over the next few weeks, they'll be rolling out an updated DirecTV Now app that will rebrand it to be AT&T TV Now. Keep that in mind. Now let's dive into AT&T TV and let's get one of the hardest things that's one of the most um, controversial aspects of all the reporting on this is what devices will AT&T TV support? Now I'm gonna read this statement right here on the, web, on the screen right now is from the new AT&T TV website. This statement and more, all these links I'm gonna be talking about can be found in the show notes down below. I'll put a link to our website where you can find it. You can go to the AT&T website, read it there for yourself. Now, according to AT&T's website, the new AT&T TV experience comes with our next generation device. So you're all set to watch on your biggest screen. Always on the go, we have you covered. Just download the AT&T TV app on your mobile device or tablet so you can stream anytime, anywhere. Now this has raised a lot of questions. Now we've known for a while that AT&T does have a new Android TV powered set-top box that was reportedly going to be used for their new DirecTV streaming service. While well, DirecTV streaming service has been confirmed to be AT&T TV, according to AT&T's executives in last week's earnings call. But many people have argued that that will be an option but will not be required. We've had sources tell us that you will be required to own an AT&T TV branded streaming player if you want to use AT&T TV. If you're using AT&T TV now, you will be able to get it through Roku, Fire TV, etc. But the AT&T TV service will require you to have an AT&T TV branded streaming player. Now, we have two sources inside AT&T telling us that with slightly different variations. One of them reported that you will be required to buy at least one AT&T TV branded streaming player, but then after that, you'll be able to use Roku, Fire TVs, Apple TVs, and more. Our other sources no, that's not true. You will be required to use AT&T TVs, you know, 
next gen device as they call it for all your TVs. We're going to have to wait and see, but there's some supporting evidence to this. Now, this is not what I'm saying. It does line up with what Variety and CNET reported AT&T said during their earnings call. According to Variety, and again, links in the show notes down below, AT&T's TV service, which will use a thin client internet set-top box on the company's um, Q2 earnings call on July 24th, CEO um, of AT&T said that AT&T will slash the customer acquisition cost by 50% compared to or compared with the legacy DirecTV satellite service. CNA also backed this up in their story a little bit more clearly, saying that the new offering, referencing AT&T TV, will allow users to stream content to the at and app on mobile devices and through a box on TVs. Seems pretty clear there yeah, that CNA and Variety also heard what I heard during the earnings call. This also lines up with what at and president of mobility and entertainment, David Christopher, said in an interview with Fierce Video back a few months ago. Now, remember this was before at and confirmed the name would be called at and TV. At the time, they were just calling it the DirecTV streaming service. We've heard that name used quite often from at and executives over the last year or so. So let's say, take a look at what Christopher told Fierce Video in, in his interview. Christopher said that at and built its new streaming box for the service, the new DirecTV streaming service, because the company believed it wouldn't get all the benefits if it had just made the new DirecTV service an application. Fierce Video went on to say that Christopher reiterated the benefit that at and executives had previously laid out, namely the low cost piece of hardware that consumers can install which will help lower the costs of customer acquisition by eliminating the need for trucks to roll and installers to climb ladders to put satellites on dishes and, uh, dishes on roofs. That seems to really confirm that that's targeting DirecTV, not DirecTV Now customers, and that you will be using a DirecTV or now at and TV piece of hardware for this. Now, you know, is our one source correct that you will be required to get one of these devices for your primary TV, but then after that, you will be able to get um, Roku Fire TV, Apple TV apps? Very possible. Somebody not working for at and told us that according to some contracts, this could allow the requirement to have a box from at and TV put into your home could allow them to use the same contracts they're using for direct TV through this new streaming service. Something about location and hardware requirements to satisfy contracts with their content owners. I don't know how true that is. All I know is it seems like a growing amount of evidence is coming together that there will be a hardware device required for at and TV and that this service is targeting direct TV customers more than it's targeting at and TV. Uh, Direct TV Now customers. So Direct TV satellite customers seems like at t wants to move them over to be a streaming customer, which lines up with other reports that at t t CEO said they're done launching satellites into space. The last one that went up this year, I believe, will be the last one out there. So there's a few other things that support this, and it comes from at t vs website. Let's take a look at this real quick. Number one, when at and website promotes the service, it talks about access to 5,000 apps like Netflix and Pandora. How are you going to get those apps? Well, it must be some type of hardware because Netflix is not built into the DirecTV app. It also talks about voice remote with Google Assistant. Again, Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV do not have a voice remote with Google Assistant. There must be some type of hardware required with this service to get that. There will also be a uh, live TV um, element to this and 5,000 on-demand titles. One catch here though, according to the little asterisk, which I added in the bottom right-hand corner, that is only true for the 55,000 on-demand titles if you have their top tier ultimate programming package, which lines up very nicely with what the DirecTV ultimate package is that includes all premium channels. If you have unlimited 
Uh, you will get unlimited home internet if you bundle AT&T TV and AT&T internet. And lastly, it will come with 500 hours of cloud DVR storage with no uh, limits of how many uh, recordings you can do at once. In theory, you could record f you know, 500 hour long programs all at the same time. There is a 90 day limit on it. Once the 90 days is up, they will auto delete your recordings. So keep that in mind. Again, this information is word for word from their website and does support the need for a box. Unfortunately, there's a lot of things we don't know. Pricing. at and hinted that since it will be cheaper to offer this without satellite and without installers, there may be some type of price break, which could just mean, hey, we're not going to charge you as much for the initial setup. Instead of that cost that you had to pay for somebody to come climb on your roof, we won't do that anymore. We don't know channels, but at t has hinted that this will basically be the DirecTV channel packages. Same with packages. We know there are packages. We know the top one is their ultimate package, but we don't know what other packages there will be. Will there be a skinny package below that? And we don't know the price for that streaming player. What will that streaming player cost? Low cost to me could be 20 bucks. To at t that could be $100. I don't know. There's a lot we don't know, but what we do know is it's coming very soon in the next at least two months and that it does seem to be targeting more DirecTV customers than DirecTV Now customers. So there we go. There's everything we know. ATT, when we reached out to them about this video and our stories said, we'll be releasing more information as we get closer to the release of the uh, new service, the at t TV. So we'll be posting updates as we learn more, but this was by far some of the most common questions we've been getting. So I wanted to address them here to help you um, maybe learn something new and maybe answer your questions. If you are new here, do me a favor, go post your questions here on YouTube or find our Facebook group. We have a um, core cutting tech support group facebook.com slash, or just search on it for um, core kind tech support. About 60,000 subscribers are there when I'm posting this. They do nothing but answer core cutting related questions. Or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and check out our site, corecuttersnews.com, because we post a ton of stories there every single day that are not um, covered here on YouTube. Just because there's so many stories, we can't possibly cover them all here on YouTube. So if you have any related questions about that, let us know. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. It really does help us and hopefully we can help you.